One thing that uh, you know you had mentioned that you're not there yet to go to consumer that I think is really important for VR is human interface devices and just how we're going to interact in a virtual world with our computer. A keyboard and mouse doesn't seem to work. I know you guys acquired a company uh, that that designed the Xbox 360 controller. Clearly, that's not you guys aren't making an Xbox 360 controller for VR. I understand that, but do you have anything to say about the importance of human interface devices? Even if you're not going to say what you're doing, just that you are you do care about it <laughs> and you are worried about it. Well, absolutely. I mean, we really care about it. We care about it enough that we don't want to announce or show anything that doesn't deliver. And we've always felt that way when we came out with Vision, we really wanted to get it right before we said we're going to the consumer market. And when we come out with audio, we're going to get audio right before we go to the consumer market. Um, if and when we do something on input, we're going to get it right. We're going to get it to be something that we're just as proud of the, the input device as we are the headset. And we're just not there yet. It's an incredibly hard thing to get right. So, you know, I think people should get excited about the future. We're R&Ding a ton of stuff. We're working on all kinds of things. Input is obviously high on the list um, of things that we want to get right. We don't want to be shipping Xbox 360 controllers or keyboard and mice with a VR device. They weren't designed for VR. They were designed for uh, a console or and a TV system or, yeah, exactly, or, or a, a laptop or a PC. Uh, you know. VR input is going to be something different and it's going to be magical and you're going to see your limbs in your hands and you're going to really feel connected to your real body and you're going to get an even stronger sense of presence. We're not quite there yet today, but you know, you could imagine we're going to get there in the future and it's going to be very, very exciting when we do. So two things that I hope are, are ready uh, when we do have CV1 come to the market would be the human interface uh, device, some solution, and also maybe some first party software from Oculus because it seems like you've assembled a rock star team of developers to not have them crank out at least a spiritual successor to Quake. We are a Quake fan site, Shaq News. That's, how, that's our roots. We started as a Quake fan site. Yep. And uh, just, you know, seeing Carmack and Abrash sitting there, I want to know. After they're done with SDK, after they're done with SDK, clearly, is there something down the pipe that Oculus has to offer us uh, from the software standpoint, or are you going to just view it as a hardware company? Well, you saw a lot of experiences today, and they were all made by Oculus with an in-house team except for the last two. So the kind of dream experience that you're floating through is called CDAC, and it was an assembly contest winner from 2010, I think it was, so um, by Unts and uh, a, another fellow. So that was a magical experience somewhat of a religious experience. I mean, it was really pretty wild. Uh, we didn't make that, and we didn't make the last demo, which was Epic's Showdown demo. Also, a pretty incredible experience, a little t intense. You know, bullets are whizzing by you, and rocks are going by, and I mean, it is bullet time, right? And yeah. It'll be even a little bit better with 360 audio. It's not quite there yet. And then you'll hear the thing, the bullet or the object whiz by right by you. Um, but it was a pretty magical experience. We didn't make those two, but we did make all the other experiences with our in-house content team. We have great artists in-house. Some of the actually very best in the industry have joined us to start making virtual reality content. What we actually end up making in terms of any kind of full game or application it's largely up to the team. It's up to what they want to do. Right now, Carmack and Abrash are really focused on solving SDK and research. So Abrash is focused on research, and Carmack is focused on the mobile SDK. Mm -hmm. If they decide at some point in the future, or if anybody at Oculus as a team kind of pulls together and decides, we really want to go out and make this first party VR game experience, and they build a prototype, and everybody in, you know, or big groups of people in the company play it and are like, this is worth investing in, this is worth taking to market, then you know we could do that. Uh, we'll see in the future. We're, we're certainly ramping up great content developers to at least show how to make great VR content.